this little video is about a project I have to get my uh, basement shop air compressor to fit better under the small workbench that it goes under. I'd done a video some years ago on this hose reel that I installed under the bench um, and how I supported it from this post that I fabricated and that's worked out well. Um, problem is I had a different air compressor down here and when that failed and I bought this one its fold-up handles got in the way and I could only operate the the hose reel kind of in this orientation the whole point of being able to swivel it around and pull the hose out in different directions was kind of spoiled by that um, so I decided one of my 2024 New Year's resolutions was to fix this one way or another and this Makita um, air compressor which has been doing a good job its problem is it has this handle which I've cut off but it stuck out this way and that was the problem it stuck out enough that it was hitting the uh, reel and I wanted to get rid of that if I don't have that then the reel can swing through its range the way I needed it to um, so the pipe that the handles made out of is welded to the tank uh, in two points there and there so I couldn't cut it below that I used my uh, grinder to cut through just above the weld thereby releasing the handle but I do occasionally transport this compressor to the museum where I donate some time or volunteer and I wanted to still be able to take it and having the handles on it would be advantageous so I want to be able to reattach the handle to that end I've got to put some sort of a plug in here that will go in both sides I've already ordered some small um, I'd call them hitch pins there's probably a better name for it uh, and I'm going to make some plugs that go between here and here and then the pins can go through and through on the other side down here conveniently the uh, inner diameter of that tubing used for the handle is one inch although it's not precisely round uh, and I wanted something I could easily machine so I ordered some one inch diameter aluminum um, stock, round stock, from Amazon. I was going to get it from McMaster Car, but turned out Amazon sells stuff like this, one foot lengths in a number of different diameters. So that should be about perfect. I'm not sure that's one inch though. Yeah, look at that. Hmm. Well, it is one inch. They're not lying. So apparently my measurements of the tubing were inaccurate. And it's more like 1.1. I don't know where I got one from when I was measuring the other day. Yeah, closer to 1.1. That's disappointing. The other part to this is um, the automatic drain valves or solenoid operated drain valves that I've been using and I have a video or two on this um, for some reason the heads keep blowing off the solenoid heads keep severing and cracking and uh, I had Van Air do some tests and uh, we couldn't figure out what the cause was uh, this actually the same thing happened to my one outside 
in my garage which just lays on the floor and this one which lays on the floor in my basement and I thought okay it can't be too cold inside it gets cold outside but then I don't have it running in the winter so it's just sitting there statically this one that's inside the only thing I could think about is because I have it on a hose an extension hose from the compressor maybe it thrashes around a little bit when it's exhausting it's behind the compressor I can't really see it but what if it did and what if it smacks this into something every time it thrashes around and fatigues the metal that's the only thing I could think about I didn't think that was likely but I decided since I'm redoing this I'm gonna put something on to protect it a little bit so I have a piece of eighth inch or quarter inch plywood and a couple pieces cut out from three-quarter inch which I'm gonna glue on and it'll just sit down in there like a cradle but it'll protect it from direct impacts anyway it's kinda nestled in there and uh, we'll see if that helps it won't hurt and meanwhile I've ordered some more aluminum round stock from Amazon, this time inch and a half, substantially bigger. I wish they would have had inch and a quarter, but it's not a big deal. Um, I'll chuck that up in the lathe and turn it down to the diameter I want. I'd rather do that than have these undersized ones flopping around loosely in there. That'll just bug me. I should get it tomorrow so it's only a day's delay. Yeah, so I've uh, epoxied the two top pieces onto the bottom piece. Alright, the epoxy is dried and I've put on one coat of white gloss enamel, just some stuff I had laying around that was expendable trying to use up the, uh, the little can of it. Use that that same paint on a couple other recent projects, which I have YouTube videos on. Probably another coat on this and that'll be good enough. I just want to protect the wood from any moisture that it may encounter. Uh, you know, that may spray out of the the uh, drain valve when it exhausts the air from the tank. There can always be a little mist of water and I don't want it to start rotting the wood or something, so a little basic protection. Two coats on the top and sides and I'm putting one coat on the bottom although that'll probably be the cleanest side. I ordered a can of the Rust-Oleum Lagoon colored spray paint in um, gloss which is supposed to be a very close match to the Makita according to several websites and uh, the seller sold me some satin, or sent me some satin, which is not what I wanted. I'm not sure how close of a match. It's actually not too bad. Um, I was really just going to use this for touching up the areas where I'd cut through the bare metal. Uh, I complained and they said keep the can, it was the last one we had and we're not carrying that product anymore so it's yours, we're refunding your money. So I guess I'll go ahead and try using this stuff. Alright, I've done some rudimentary masking. I'm going to paint the main part inside, I'm going to take the other part outside and spray it. Alright, one liberal coat. I've just got that balanced up there to let it dry. I have one of these tools that helps you drill holes into corners or centered on round objects, but the holes are too far offset from the ends to get in where I need to get on this particular thing drilling through the handles. So I just uh, use the hardest wood I had in my shop I don't know if that's maple or what, but, um, and I just notched it out, drilled a hole of the same size I'm going to be using, an eighth of an inch drill as a pilot hole for the bigger hole, 
and since it's a relatively hard wood, hopefully it'll hold up to drilling four holes before it starts to get itself undercut and sloppy. All right, the uh, paint is all dry on this, a couple of coats. It's not uh, de-dusted or anything, so it's got an imperfect finish, but it's just there to protect the wood against a little moisture. I want to put some sort of feed on here. I'm still looking through my junk box to see what might work best for that. Meantime, I'll give you just a quick aside. I'm doing some glue-up repair work on this cover. It came all apart at the seams using a combination of uh, wood glue and CA glue in different places. And that goes with this old thing that's been in the family for about three generations, but it's going to a uh, museum in Ohio, and I promised them that I don't know if it would work well or not, but at least it would look decent by the time I gave it to them. So that's a side project going on. And I've got this project going on to hang my Alphorn. <laughs> I've owned an Alphorn since I was a teenager, but it was kept in my parents' house. And uh, in recent times it's moved back to my house, but I haven't been able to figure out where to put it. I still have the old brackets I made as a teenager in Germany. A uh, little high school wood project. But in order to adapt it to the drywall, I put them on these interstitial plates that can go into concrete anchors, or not concrete anchors, um, drywall anchors like this. So that'll be another project. And meanwhile, I've found this old thing that I built probably, I don't know, 40 years ago, something like that. When I used to make uh, photo uh, etch circuit boards using an old Daytac process and I'd made this light table. It's got a nice squishy pressure pad. It's just uh, foam rubber with black fabric over it and three uh, UV bulbs, fluorescent bulbs with the UV phosphor so they emit the UV and there's some sort of an electronics controller. I don't even remember what's in here and it was, I don't know, pause, start, reset, whatever, I don't even remember what they did, LEDs to go with them and some sort of a selector switch that's not marked, it probably had some significance to a piece of paper that I've since lost. I didn't use this that many times but it did work and I had it set up so if I take out these two screws then there's a slot here and you can slide the glass out sideways in order to get at the bulbs. Oh, I think P was probably for power. I have it plugged in, let's see. Huh, that light still lights up, how about that? So this is probably like set and reset. I probably have a little IC flip-flop or something in there. Let's uh, try pushing that, and it lights up. Well, two out of the three have lit up. I think the uh, flashing amber means that the timer has started. But the uh, ballast is really humming loud, maybe because that last lamp hasn't kicked off yet. Now, well, it's dead. So I'm going to push the reset button turn those off. Well, it pretty much works about that after all these years. Let's see what's in here. I don't want to digress too much from the subject, but uh, okay, I've got three starters and a board and three ballasts. Wired up, did a pretty neat job on that if I do say so myself. And then there's a little circuit board with a uh, power transformer, a uh, little full-way bridge rectifier, a couple other diodes, resistor, 
electrolytic capacitor, three terminal voltage regulator, and some 4000 series logic ICs. Um, Yeah, and then there's a solid state relay here, and I'm sure that's what's uh, applying the power to everything down here. So not too bad. I think I did a decent job on it way back when. I suspect that's just a counter chain. There's probably a uh, low frequency o um, oscillator with this capacitor here. Um, I mentioned, so I imagine this is the clock and then there's a series of counters that are counting up and then different points get tapped off with the selector switch and then there's a flip-flop probably down on the last stage that handles the set and reset so I imagine that was my approach. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Alright, I put some little rubber feet on there. Just keep it off the floor a bit, let some air under it. Alright, this aluminum rod is marked for the two plugs. And first thing I need to do is cut it on the bandsaw. So I've got the first piece of cut off aluminum in the uh, lathe chucked up here. And um, I have a pretty rough face on there. I kept turning the piece instead of just cutting straight through it and I probably shouldn't have done it that way. It made a kind of a semi corkscrew shape so there's a big lip here. Anyway that'll all be cut off. Uh, it'll be faced off. Look at these glorious shavings here. I was probably turning it a little too fast, but I was getting such a pretty shave off of there, I just decided to keep going at that rate. It seemed to be cutting nicely. Unfortunately, my tool holder is so sloppy that I haven't been able to get this cheap Chinese thing really to behave itself in that regard. Um, so it's not like I'm doing really precision work here anyway.
I'm going to replace this uh, hose here. It's feeling kind of soft and it's uh, two or three years old. You got one exactly like it. Okay, compressor is recharged to 140 psi pre regulator and 120 post regulator. And uh, just to test this out, I'm listening for leaks. I don't hear any. Let's try opening this one. I don't hear any. Nothing with that. So I'm just going to plug in the temporary cord. There. That would normally go to the electronics unit. And let's see if it opens. Yep, that worked. So I think all is well with that. And I've got my wires from my timer controller reconnected. I've got everything adjusted on the hose so this will lay more or less flat. I think it's sitting, it could sit just a little flatter so I'm going to tweak it slightly with the wrench right at this joint. Turn it another couple of degrees. And the valve and its solenoid are tucked into this contraption I made up earlier. And that will keep it from sitting right on the floor and also if it thrashes around a little bit every time the air lets loose it'll have a buffer around it instead of just possibly smacking into something. That's all I can think of to do to protect it. And it's way back in there by the wall pointing at it at a bit of an angle, pretty close to where it was before. And that's one reason why I assume that possibly in that confined area when it lets off there's a pretty good blast of air. It may shoot the valve backwards to the point where the solenoid hits that uh, lower handlebar where it curves around. That's my best guess for what might have happened to it. Okay, those two pieces are made have the eighth inch shoulder on them. I started these on my lathe and then the drive belt broke so I had a friend with a lathe finish them up for me. Unfortunately I didn't have the uh, handle piece there for him to tweak the size and on one side they fit in just perfectly. On the other side the tubing is a little bigger or a little smaller or it's slightly out of round or maybe it's just the uh, welded seam. I think there's a welded seam inside these. Um, yeah, for the tubing is rolled. So um, it's probably easiest to just go in here with a uh, Dremel sander and take it down a hair, shoot it with a bit more touch-up paint and then hopefully everything will fit well. Well the Dremel sanding drum did the trick. It was really just the small weld ridge from where the tubing was rolled and welded that caused the problem. Sanded it out and now everything fits nicely. Everything's fitting in there nicely now. I had to go in there with the Dremel cutoff wheel and clean up these surfaces. I'd already done these uh, so that I could get a pretty nice contact point around the shoulder of the plug. Now I just have to drill the holes for the pins. Final touch up of paint. And I have the uh, aluminum slugs marked which end goes in first and their ideal orientation because even with the jig I made I can't be sure that the holes are absolutely on center. Alright, there's the finished modification. I still wish I could have got the gloss paint but from any distance it's not apparent. So it's a simple matter to pull these spring clips 
take these out. And then the handle just comes right off. Pretty as you please. And these are uh, stainless steel parts here purchased from Amazon. Ideal size and shouldn't have any issues with them rusting in the humidity of the basement. Well, it doesn't do any good to have the handle on there when I'm going to be putting it back under the bench, so off this comes again. Okay, everything's happy again going underneath the bench. And I can swing my cord reel around like I wanted. I've got the handle stubs down there. The handle's stored against the wall behind the compressor. This is about where the drain valve was before. It kind of points at the wall uh, with that short extension hose. I can't really get it to point anywhere else. I can swing it slightly around to the side like that. I suspect it's going to try to push its way back somewhere around there. So that's where I've got it right now and all is right with the world.